Hey my friends, so I'm excited to take a look at this with you. So this is the new deck from Robin and Place, whose work I'm always interested, even if much of it goes over my head. Um, I think he's a very good writer of particularly difficult concepts. Um, and uh, I, have, I, I have most of his decks. I've got the Alchemical, I've got... Um, the Buddha Tarot, the Vampire Tarot, Sevenfold Mystery, um, the Burning Serpent, what else? Um, oh, the Alchemical, what is it called? <clears throat> the Magnum Opus, the Alchemical Magnum Opus, which is sort of a distillation of his uh, Alchemical Tarot. But anyway, so I'm a fan definitely of his art and, and definitely of the um the the ways he creates his his work oh god I'm such a mess um I'm working with the dullest blade here I really need a new I don't know where my exacto knife went um <laughs> what was I saying <laughs> this is this new deck it's, so this is God I'm gonna be bleeding by the end of this video. Why is everything so difficult? I'm trying not to scratch the box as I do this too, which is like, all right, there we go. Did I do it? This is like the strongest plastic. Oh my God. Oh no. Okay, well that's done. So anyway. Anywho, all right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, I need life to come to some resting place that isn't this pandemic. Anyway, so this is his new deck. It's gonna be such a bitch to edit this video. So this is the Alchemical Tarot of Marseille, an interpretation of the French tarot that references alchemy and the Hermetic Texts by Robert M. Place, and it is a deck and book set, and it is beautifully done in this cloth, this sort of luscious red cloth box, um, which it sort of pulls out. And then we have the cards and a little booklet. And the cards are gilded, as you can see. We'll unwrap this. And then we'll have the um, guidebook. Um, so copyright 2021, Baron and Plays. And then there's a little introduction. Um, there's actually a rather large introduction. Um, and then it goes into the trumps. And then just a little bit about the suits. Um, and there is a sort of narrative um, if you've read his, his book for the Alchemical Tarot or the Sevenfold Mystery um, Tarot or his giant tome, um, then you'll know that there's a, there's a sort of mystery, um, alchemical narrative, not a mystery, but an, alch an alchemical narrative that he uses to explain it. Now, I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying, like, I... I couldn't care less about the alchemical stuff, right? Like, that's fine. It's not me. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, but I do, you know, I will say that that he does sort of write these things in a way that um, makes sense and that, you know, you can understand where he's coming from. And he does a nice job drawing a line between the the theme that he's working with and the deck. I think the best example of that is the Vampire Tarot, because when I first saw that deck, um, I managed to get a copy of it, but it didn't have the book with it. And so I walked through the deck and I thought, oh, this is really great, but it wasn't until I finally got the book where I was able to understand some of the choice, choices that he made. And I said, oh, okay, now I get why Nina is the High Priestess, for example. Um, and then with the Buddha Tarot, you, you sort of can't use it without the book. So he, he writes and he makes really smart choices. So that, that's really what's interesting to me. Plus, anything Marseille themed, um, I'm curious about. Now, I mean, you know, it's not, it, it, it's sort of, I've been, I've been waiting for like a straight up 
kind of rubber and place Marseille uh, for a while, and this is this is not that, but I am excited to see it. So here we have the Fool. Um, also, really great cardstock. If you've noticed or or seen any of his new decks, um, they're coming on this really great, really yummy cardstock. It's not super thick, so it's not hard to shuffle. So here we have the Magician, and there is text on the cards which um, I think ties the card into the alchemical process. Um, so, you know, I mean, it looks nothing like the Marseille, really, you know. And I have seen all these cards on the, uh, on the website, so this isn't a surprise. But I think it's, re it's, it's still really cool. Um, and I've always found his art style very similar to um, the Marseille. So I, you know, I do, I do love that. And that's one, that's again, another reason why it's like, I like the art he makes. I like his style. Um, it's like this modern woodblock. So there's the Pope. And then the lover. <clears throat> the chariot. Justice. The Hermit. The Wheel of Fortune. Force. La Pendu, the Hanged Man. Really, the, the Hanged Man in, in many old systems was the traitor. Um, it's death. So it's got the simplicity of a uh, Marseille, but it doesn't have, it's not, it's not a copy of it. Um, and there's definitely these elemental and astrological symbols. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's his version of that. Um, which again, it's like, though I was sort of, uh, you know, I was like, when is he going to do a Marseille deck? You know, it's like, we have Marseille decks. So, you know, I'm, I'm always excited when people kind of take and explore something through their lens. Like, it's an adaptation of it. You know, the way that, um, you know, Clueless is an adaptation of Emma. That's a really kind of current reference, isn't it? You know, it's a, it, Clueless is an adaptation of a uh, Jane Austen novel. It's Jane Austen. Um, you know what I mean? So, like, they took that story and they put their spin on it. That's sort of, you know, this is like an adaptation of Marseille through the lens of Robert M. Place and his alchemical hermetic um, learnings. So we have Judgment. And then the world. So those are the majors. And now we will get into the suits. Oh, in the back. I didn't show you the back, but it has Hermes. Who, um, kind of a, a, a key, you know, key uh, avatar in a way for Robert M. Place, who, who calls his, um, his brand, his company, Hermes Publications. So here's the Ace of Coins. And two. And so Robert M. Place does, I, keep, I don't know, I keep saying him, his full name, but Robert M. Place. Um, he does a thing in a lot of his decks where it's sort of like part pip, part illustrated. The Buddha Tower does that, the Vampire Tower does that. So I'm wondering, you know, as I look, because you can kind of get that sense here how um, we are going to get kind of the pip, but also some kind of illustrative scene. So. It's just a really well done deck, and also I'll give him credit for not making all the coins exactly the same, uh, which is easy to do. And my guess is that these coins represent people, or elements, in some way. So here's the page, the valet, and then here's the knight, the queen. 
and the king. And so now we go into cups. There's the ace of cups. Whoops. <clears throat> the two. The three. The four. There was, seems to be an elephant on the four of cups, and I can't remember why, but he does write about it. Because it's the exact same, it's not the exact same thing, but there's an elephant on the four of cups in the sevenfold and the alchemical. It's the five. Six. I like the color palette a lot, too. I mean, that's another thing. I think, especially for folks who maybe don't think the Marseille is, is an attractive color palette, um, this is definitely a, a, a nod to the Marseille color palette, but it's very much his own thing. And I wouldn't, and knowing his work as I do, I would imagine that each, each color choice was very deliberately chosen to represent, you know, an alchemical uh, element or process or... You know, I mean, I really, really do recommend his book. I gave it away to a friend, and I kind of wish I hadn't, because I would have liked to reference it. Um, it is a tome. It's huge. I tried to read it on an airplane once, and I couldn't even fit it in my lap, because it's that big. But uh, I really do recommend it, because it explains all his decks really well. Um, you know, so so if you are a fan of his work, that book is definitely... And, and he wrote my, probably the most formative book of my tarot reading life, Tarot History, Symbolism, Divination, which was the book that taught me to use three cards per position in a spread, which was, you know, reader changing. So here we get into the Ace of Swords. Um... I'll say too, as we as we walk through this, he's he's leading some online classes. Um, if you go to his website, I think you can learn more about it. Uh, my friend Liz is taking one of them on things like alchemy um, and the tarot. So you know he's, I you know I think one of the reasons why I'll oh, see look, this is a Rider Waite Smith situation in my Marseille deck. No. Um, uh, you know, if you want to know more about it, too, he's teaching. And I think that's another thing about him, too, is that he, you know, he is very smart. He has all this knowledge. He has all this history. And he's always very willing to share it with people. I know that he has done um, tours of the Met Metropolitan Museum in New York. There's, like, a tarot um, tour that he's done around the time of the Reader Studio in New York. Uh, you know, so he's, he's very generous with his knowledge. Um, so... You know, I just have an immense amount of respect for him in addition to being a fan of his work. And I'll tell you, you know, I may not be interested in the alchemical aspect of things, but I will say that I don't feel like when he's talking about this stuff or when he's creating this stuff that it's bull. Because I know, he, you know, he has so much credibility because I've read his books and I know that he knows his stuff. Um... And so this is a deck that I may not have gotten had it been made by someone else that I didn't, whose, whose work history I didn't know. Um, because I do know that maybe the alchemical stuff isn't for me, but I know that when Robert M. Place writes about it, um, he's not winging it. Uh, and he's very thoughtful about his choices. So I actually wish that the little guidebook for this were larger, and who knows, at some point maybe there will be, or maybe, you know, these all reference what's in the tome. But, um, so here's the knight, uh, the, the page of swords. That was the knight, this is the queen. I really like the courts a lot, and I like that they're in French. So now we get into, um, the, the wands, and this is so... You know, this is so so Robert M. Place, the style. And I really do. I, I love the way that... I really like this deck a lot. Um, and, and, and I guess, too, I can say, like, as someone who is not drawn necessarily to the alchemical or the hermetic stuff, I don't feel like this these associations are necessarily intruding on my ability to read. 
Um, I don't find it distracting, you know, um, which I sometimes can with a, with a themed deck. Um, sometimes the, the theme overwhelms the deck. And I think with a pip deck, that's, that's a balance you really have to consider. Um, because one of the things people want out of a pip deck is to not be overly distracted by illustration, you know. And again, I'm, I, I, I'm illustration, you know, I love Rider Waite Smith decks. I love pip decks. I'm not, you know, saying one's better than the other. But oftentimes when you're reaching for a pip deck, like a lot of times when I'm doing a, a love reading or a relationship reading about something really complicated or potentially unfortunate or unpleasant, I will reach for pip decks because they're less likely to tint the impression. You know, if you get a lot of swords cards, um, that can make someone go, oh god, you know, this is going to be the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And that's not necessarily the case. So, you know, one benefit of pip decks is that they are relatively neutral, which is something that I look for as a reader all the time. I don't want a deck that's going to tip the hat one way or another emotionally, because I want the cards to work together to do that. And so the images can sometimes overwhelm. Um, I have small hands. These are a little big. I can, you know, I can definitely get it around them, but you saw how clumsy I was just there. But, um, they riffle really nicely. Um, I don't know that I could bridge it. No, it's too big for me to bridge, but they riffle really nice. Um, and there's none of that sticking that you sometimes get with Gilded Decks. Uh, so let's lay some out. So this also for this set, you know, is it's $48 um, for a self-published deck, gilded, gorgeous box, beautiful cardstock. Like, I don't think that's excessive. I've certainly paid more. Um, and he does have a special edition now of the alchemical that comes similarly packaged uh, in green. Uh, so let's, what I will say about decks that have a large size is that there's something very tarot about them, like I kind of love, you know, handling, I like, you know, a big deck, as it were. Um, play with a big deck. Um, so yeah, I'm doing my normal nine card situation. I didn't shuffle all that well, but you know, I always like to see them laid out in the spread, and this is the spread I use the most. Um, and it looks great. Again, I don't feel distracted by anything in it. Even the language, the text on the majors is not super distracting. Um, and in a way, I, I don't mind it. It reminds me a bit of the um, Grand Tarot Boleyn which has writing all over it, although that's in French. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this a lot. I mean, I'm a big fan of his work. I don't, this is not necessarily alchem alchemy, um, hermeticism. These are not things that, that draw, that call to me. Um, but I do know, you know, having read his work, that he knows what he's talking about. And I think just as a, as a, as a pip deck, this is really gorge. And it's so well produced, you know, and I just, I'm like really delighted with it. And, you know, that's saying something, because this year I've, I've just, like, here we are, like, I just want my vaccine and I want to, like, see friends again. Like, I haven't been delighted with anything in weeks. I just sort of feel unsensitized to everything. So, go figure. Um, so that's it. That's the Alchem um, Alchemical Tarot of Marseille by Mr. Robert M. Place. Um... And I pre-ordered this, so it came relatively quickly, but I know it's up for sale on his shop. Um, so I really like it. Uh, I hope you do too. I hope you're well. Be good. And we'll see you soon.